Hello everybody, glad you can make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to my houseplant tour. Now a few things before we start. Number one, I'm using my DSLR. I don't usually do that, probably because I can't, you know, stabilize it very well when I walk around. So if this is bumpy in any way, I'm really sorry. I'm gonna try my best not to talk with my hands and keep the camera really, really steady. Second of all, I want you guys to know that I'm here, well, I used to be at this flat the best of times, maybe 50% of the week. So 50% of the week, my plants would be unattended to. Now, quite honestly, because I'm in mid season, I'm probably here maybe one or two days out of every two weeks. I do have someone that looks after my fish and everything else, so that's fine, do not worry. But generally speaking, I'm not really here. So that kind of leads me on to the third thing and the fourth thing I'd like to say, which is a lot of these plants you'll see today have signs of damage. Generally, that's probably either underwatering or it could be pests. This is obviously due to the fact that I haven't been here and a lot of plants have quite honestly suffered. The third thing is that you may notice some plants have disappeared or I might tell you that certain plants are going to be removed from this flat. There's no, you know, there's nothing bad that's happened. It's basically just either due to space reasons or perhaps I can take care of them better or grow them better at the shop. So you may see that as we go around, I will make sure that I tell you what those things are when we come to them. So the first very quick thing I have to show you guys is my variegated ZZ. I did mention in a video a while ago that this plant snapped at the base. I'm pleased to tell you that it has actually rerouted. So that's really, really cool and I'm not gonna lose that. I was very, very worried, but I'll try and get up to her. See if my camera likes me enough to focus on this. It's an, it's an alright lens, but it doesn't really have image stabilization, which is why I'm worried that it might be really shaky. So I'm very sorry for that. Like if I breathe, it'll move. <laughs> but that is her. She's looking very, very pretty. She lives here on the table. She can maybe have some more light, but for now, I think she's good. So that is her. I'll take a quick moment to mention these cushions. I'll try and move back a little bit further just so you can get them in a little bit better. So these cushions are from an Etsy seller and I get an awful lot of questions about them. I will leave the link for the seller in my description below. So if you're interested in these, please do check that out. But basically they are the most beautiful velvet cushions and all of the detail is actually stitched into these cushions, which makes them really, 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 really nice. Loving those. I may buy more of these. These aren't the cheapest cushions in the world. They're actually quite pricey, but I do think they're worth it. If you're wanting to get them, but you don't know if they're really worth the money, honestly they are, but I would maybe keep them as centerpiece cushions or something like that. Right, onto the plants. So this is my Anthurium Clarinervium hybrid. I don't fully know what hybrid this is. I've been told that it could be Clarinervium crossed with Pterodactyl, but I don't know. Uh, it does have some yellowing tips there where I think it just suffered from rehabbing from shipping generally. Same thing, where is it there with the leaf as well? Not looking amazing. Sorry, I can't get right in with this camera because if I do and I have to move, you end up getting a really shaky, shaky shot. But there you go, that is her. That's a really nice anthurium, and the cool thing about that anthurium is that I actually hand-picked this in Thailand when I went. Um, I picked this from a nursery, and there was loads of different hybrids with slightly different shapes, but I liked this one the most. So I hand-picked it, and I had the nursery send it to me when I got home, which was really nice. And I was very lucky to be able to do that, honestly. Very, very lucky indeed. Um, so this here is my Monstera Dubaia. It's pretty sexy. Yeah, so it's growing up the wall. It hasn't actually adhered itself yet, but I'm worried it's going to. So honestly, the Dubaia is probably a plant that I'm going to have to remove from this flat because I don't own it, I rent it, and you are not allowed to pin anything to the walls or hang anything um, in flats where I rent. So I have to just take this out. Plus I think I can give it a better life elsewhere. Obviously you can see there, oh, that depth of field though. You can see there that there is some winter growth, but I think I might chop it. I don't know, because that's obviously summer growth there and you can see it's obviously way better. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So this is probably overexposed to high heaven, I apologize, but this is my gorgeous variegated monstera and I will try and get in on it the best I can because she is like way beautiful, look at that. I hope this hasn't overexposed to the max and you still get some good viewing here. I'm really sorry if that's just too overexposed, but I'm all around windows right now. They're like floor to ceiling windows, so I'm very sorry. But this is her. She does have some imperfect pieces on her where she got basically underwatered. You probably see them right there. 
Not a lot I could do about that. I was away for too long and she didn't get watered. I don't think it's a light issue. I genuinely think it's a watering issue. So that kind of sucks, but what can you do? Aside from that though, she's growing really, really well. If I just pan up and show you there, again, I'm trying to do the best I can with the DSLR. She's growing a little bit ridiculous right now. And I don't know how to stop her. If I just take you round there, you can probably see the extent of how well she's growing. Again, it's probably gonna overexpose. These are the nicest leaves. There's some really sexy leaves here, look. Like that's fucking sexy, that's really nice. So she's very, very healthy. She just has one or two bits that are probably less than desirable. Whether you can see inside here or not, you may see that I've had to stick a moss pole in there. That is because I couldn't find one the right size, but I'm kind of out of time. So I've had to just stick one in the top there to help her grow. We'll just move back a little bit. It's quite hard to actually view things on this lens because my YouTube lens. But there she is there. She's lovely, isn't she? So that is my super, super overexposed Monstera. And if I show you down here, you will see my potentially also overexposed, yes, of course, uh, Calathea White Star. Now she's looking great. I might have to pull her out a little bit. If I put her over here, there, I can probably get a bit of a better view of her now. I've put her over there. So she's really, really beautiful. She's had one or two accidents, or more specifically, I've had some accidents, as you may be able to see here with neem, or at least I believe it's neem. I sprayed it with neem basically strong enough to kill anything on my Monstera. And obviously with this plant having leaves that are much thinner, it hasn't done well for me. So I've kind of damaged that. So you can see some damage on the leaves. Not 100% it's from the neem, but I'm 99%. However, the cool thing is you will notice that this leaf is very long and thin and small. But if you look here, I've grown some really nice, pretty big ones. And that basically, I did mention on Instagram, I kind of had a secret to this, but that secret is basically tank water. I've been giving it water from my fish tank over there and it's just grown the biggest, most beautiful leaves on it. And it just looks incredible all the time. Not only that, but the tips, I don't know if I can show you very well. Not only that, but the tips look perfect as well. So I'm like super, super happy about that. It's just a beautiful plant and it's doing really, really well. It's not in self-watering yet. I would like it to be. I just haven't really had time, but it is on my list to get that in self-watering. And I will use tank water in self-watering as well, just to help that out. Oh gosh, this is gonna get really hard to film now, but this down here is not looking too good. You may be able to see it. I'll try not to move the camera too much. This is my variegated Monstera that I made for my mum, and it has taken a beating. Basically, I made this, I potted this up, and I went away to my shop for a week, and the, the damage on that leaf you see on the bottom there occurred because that particular cutting was placed too high in the lecker, and it didn't get any water, so that happened. I am extremely pissed off about it. No one is more pissed off than me right now, but I'm just gonna keep growing it and see what happens. It'll be okay. I've got more cuttings if I need to, but it's just a big shame, but that's just one of the perils I've had from basically not being here and not being able to take care of things. Here we have my gorgeous yellow variegated Monstera doing very well. Um, it's not so yellow though. I've noticed it's going a little bit almost lime green, which I'm not really very happy about that. Um, it is gorgeous, so gotta give it that at least. There, she pretty, but she not full yellow, so not very pleased with that, if I'm honest. That could be a better situation than what it is. Speaking of bad situations, we've got some really great, what looks like fungus or bacteria on my Anthurium clarinervium. I'll see if I can get up close to it because this is actually a bit easier to view for you. But there you go, that's not great. Again, up here, that's not great either, is it? That's really, really shit. So I need to buy some spray and treat that and cut leaves and do what I need to do. I didn't notice that that was a problem until I came home yesterday. Before I move to the biob, I will show you this little guy. I'll show you what I can of him. He's outgrown his pole. This is Philodendron Vericosum crossed with Philodendron Melanochrysum. And it's very beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But it's totally outgrowing its pole. So that's not ideal, I have to say. I think I've learned a lesson here in, in planting things on poles. I think that 
the height that I want the pole, just add another foot on minimum and then I might be okay because I seem to underestimate the length of poles that I need for things. So right now this is going to be virtually impossible to show you and I'm very sorry in advance. Unfortunately guys I can't get rid of that reflection on the glass but that is my variegated Adansonii doing reasonably well in the orb. I wouldn't say it was doing great, it has had some leaves drop off. Um, this here, you may be able to see, is my Monstera Oblique. Now, my full thoughts on the Biorb, I've done a video on it. Those of you that have not seen that, you will know I've grown this in this orb for about a year, maybe a little bit more. Um, I don't recommend it, basically, for that. So, that is my Oblique, but it needs to come out. It's very, very big. It's very large. Look at it. It's fucking beautiful, though. Look at that. That is just the most beautiful plant. It's actually not bad footage that I'm getting. I thought I'd get way worse footage than that. Now, there is something I want to say about this Oblique really quickly. And basically, that is as follows. I have always said that I wouldn't cut any part of this plant. Um, and people have said to me, you know, well, why? How come you're selling it then? You know, you're selling it in your shop. And basically, to clear that up, when I said that, I had this Oblique growing in this orb, as you see right here. And it hadn't ran. It hadn't sent out any runners or anything like that. So when I said it, I assumed that the oblique was never going to run again. So what I meant was, you know, I wouldn't take any cuttings of it, basically, and sell those. But since I've replanted it, it has been running quite prolifically, actually. So I have been removing those as honestly, guys, if you don't know about how oblique runners work, they just take over. There's actually one growing there in the background. Don't think the camera's going to focus on it at all. There, in the background, it's growing. So, it's, I don't know if you can tell where I have made cuts. Maybe you can there. I've made one or two cuts, but I've never actually cut the plant. If you see cuts like that, it's actually runner that's been cut and not the oblique itself. So I'll stand up because it's actually really hard to stand like that. But I just want you to know that I haven't been selling bits of the oblique. I've been selling runners. So the oblique is totally intact and it's due to come out of there because there is just no space in the orb. Moving on to the top of my TV stand, we have a few plants. We have my gorgeous Hartley philodendron that has grown a little bit insane. Sorry for my pajamas, you can probably see in the reflection there. Um, it's grown all the way down here and it's actually all over the floor. So that needs cut ASAP. Um, again, haven't had time. So that's doing okay, it's showing signs of being underwatered unfortunately. This plant, and to be honest, any of the plants on here, they aren't in self-watering containers, and because they're above a television, they don't get watered as often as they should, so they're suffering a little bit as well. Now, one thing that is not suffering, though, is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, which is actually doing very well. It's kind of reverted over here, but honestly, I'm not even mad. I think I've kind of left it how it is because I'm so sick of having to cut things when variegation you know, drops. It's kind of refreshing to me to just let something grow out. Do you know what I mean? Without having to chop it. As obviously in the shop, if something loses variegation, I have to chop it back. I'm just kind of pleased that I don't really have to do this with that. So it's kind of refreshing. I think that's why I've left it. So up here, I have my beautiful philodendron micans. I will try and move back for you and show you what it looks like because it's very long. But here she is. She's looking very nice. She actually does grow to the floor. You can't see it, but she does have a vine that is kind of growing. You might be able to clock it right there where the ghost is, but she has a vine reaching to the floor, so she needs cut too. So between her and the heart leaf, it's a little bit ridiculous in here, but that is her. Again, you can see that she has some signs of yellowing, which is very, very unfortunate. But again, same applies. Haven't had time. They're above a TV. They get, you know, they miss warrings quite a lot. But at least they're tough, right? So down here we have my philodendron Florida ghost, or at least one of them in the Lachusa self-watering pot that I'm testing. So that's it down there. Um, review on that coming soon, as soon as I get around to it. And here, oh my goodness, can you see that shit? Oh my god. So this is my philodendron gloriosum crossed with philodendron melanochrysum, and it is beautiful. It's also known as philodendron glorious. And it's looking very good. I got this plant when it maybe had three leaves on the bottom and unlike the other plant, the leaves on that are getting smaller as they grow, whereas the leaves on this one are getting larger as they grow. Between the other plant, you know, here and this one, I'm really, like, really preferring this plant. I just love that. That is absolutely stunning. Let me show you it up close, because honestly, 
it's worth it even for a shaky shaky pan it's still worth it it's absolutely stunning this is a new leaf here that's just come out very recently hence you will see that it is new because it's not quite the same color as the other leaves these leaves come out really nice and kind of i want to say bronze colored they're really really pretty can recommend these if you don't already have one. Up here we have my extremely messy looking Philodendron Florida Ghost. This may get moved to the shop, I'm not sure. I have too many ghosts here, so something has to give um, in the meantime. So this one might get moved and I might put maybe my Thai Constellation that's next door. I might put that here instead. Yeah, it's it needs chopped down as well. It's a bit of a mess. Don't get me wrong, it's a total mess. I'm, I'm aware of this. Oh, that's a cheeky little bit of Philodendron Micans just stuck in the side there if you're wondering what that is. And down here is my Amedrium Medium. Now there's two different forms in this pot. There is the green form and there is the blue or silver form that you can see right there. You probably can't differentiate the two different forms and that's quite fine when the sunlight is shining on them they kind of look similar um they used to look more obvious than what they do now i don't know if that's my conditions or what and if i just sit down i will show you the absolute chaos that is the runners on this plant this plant is very very difficult to grow in my opinion i mean it grows but to grow it without just having endless runners with plants on it is a little bit difficult don't mind my little bed socks <laughs> Yeah, it's not the easiest of plants to grow. Obviously, it's in a self-watering pot, so I don't kill it when I'm not here. Um, but that's kind of it. Oh, there is one more plant, actually. There is one more. And if I whew, zoom you around, this plant here by my fish tank is my Philodendron Dark Lord. I don't want it to live here. It's a little bit too dark for him, so I will probably move him. Probably once I have found somewhere else for him to be, so when I've got rid of some plants. So this is him. That's the front. And that is the back. Very, very sexy. Love, 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 love those plants. Very nice. And once again, here is my overexposed living room with all my plants in it. I do keep this a certain way. Um, I just like to watch TV and have certain plants around me. So that's kind of why it looks like this right now. These are just some of my favorites in here. It just depends. Like some of these are just too big to not be in here. It really depends. But that is my overexposed living room plants. I will now take you to my other plants. Right, before we go and I show you my other plants, I want to talk about this very briefly because I have mentioned this before on my biob review. Basically, this is a biopod. It's not a biob, it's a biopod. And I've had this sat here for the best part of, quite honestly, a year. Um, there it is right here, biopod. Um, it's really, really cool in theory, but I've heard a lot of shit about it basically. So I will be scaping that in the next couple of months and you will get a first impressions on it. We'll grow some plants then I'll give you my review. So please, for the love of God, don't go out and buy this yet because honestly, I really have heard a whirlwind of shit about it, so don't. But we'll see how it goes with that. I really need to get around to doing that. Right, this is my plant room and it might be a little bit dark, but that's honestly because I'm pointing the camera at a window and it don't like that. So I have plants on the table there. Then I have some plants there. I have some plants up along my shelves. And I have plants down here. Right, so the first plant I have to show you in here is my gorgeous Monstera Thai Constellation, who is showing signs of neglect. He is showing signs of underwatering. This leaf here occurred because he dried out way too much. I came back after a week, I watered him, and he suffered a little bit of damage. Let me see if I can actually show you by showing that there. Look at that, seriously. That's not funny, is it, really? Um, you may see a couple of gnats, that's also a casualty of some of the self-watering planters I have. But this thing needs repotted, it's long overdue, and as a result, it's drying out. So that's not amazing. So this here, this plant right here, is my Philodendron El Choco Red, and it is such a beautiful plant, I can't even tell you. That's the underside right there. Look at the underside of the leaves, honestly. Have you seen anything so beautiful? I don't think you have. I really don't think you have. But that's my gorgeous Choco right there. It's not growing amazingly, it could be growing a hell of a lot better than what it is. Next to that I have, which does look similar actually, that's really weird. This is my Philodendron Luxurians. This is different from the Choco. Um, it is much thirstier and it's much harder to grow. I can definitely tell you that. That's a brand new leaf, that's why it looks a bit paler. Right there you've got one of the older leaves as well. 
that leaf right there is from the Choco, it's not from Luxurians. And next to that I have one of many Philodendron Florida Ghosts. Now a few of these are probably going to get removed from this house, obviously I will always keep one at least. But a lot of these are probably going to have to get moved to the shop because it's just, it's not even a joke anymore. I've got that many. It's just a bit of a nightmare. So I will probably remove some of these. So at the top of my shelves there, you've got my Anthurium Batari Folium, who is not doing great at all. This guy had a pretty big issue with spider mites, so he is now recovering. He will most definitely get removed from here because he's just not happy here. Obviously, apart from spider mites, he hasn't really grown a whole wedge of much. So he needs to be removed. He needs to go somewhere where he can be. Well, where you can just thrive a little bit more. That is my Anthurium Queen. I'm looking, well, at least in my viewfinder, it's looking pretty gorgeous. The pot is a Lechuza pot and it's very good for long-leafed plants. So I will link that down below as well as the cushions, obviously, that I mentioned earlier as well, in case you want to check that out. Now, down below that, I should be able to come closer because these are smaller plants, but this right here is my Philodendron Burley Marks Fantasy. I know that in the US this isn't so rare for you guys, but in the EU this is like super rare. Let me just move in on it a little bit there so you can see it. Super, super rare for us. Honestly, it really is. This cost a bomb. I saw an auction go for one of these a couple of weeks ago and it was about £500, so they go for a lot of money. Um, but it's very beautiful, it's very small. I have snipped it, as you can probably tell, because it was actually growing above the stake, so I snipped a bit off. And I'm taking it to my shop to propagate. So that's why I've snipped that. Also, I may as well cover it now. I've snipped this too. This is my Monstera Silta Bacana that I've also had a little bit of a chop at. Same reason again. It was getting a bit leggy anyway. So I've sent it to the shop to propagate. There you go. Get a bit of a better view. Again, another plant that is pretty easy to get in the US. But not easy in the EU. Just seems to be really difficult. So that's her right there. Now this little beauty is, I'm not entirely sure what it is. I don't know if it's called Anthurium papalapanum or something like that. I don't know if it's a pure Anthurium or it's a hybrid. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's very gorgeous. And you're basically looking at the leaf that has come out, you know, while it's been in my care. And these other two leaves here are from shipping. So really, really pretty plant. I actually quite like it. Um, I don't think it's a well-known one. As I say, it could be a totally random one. I'm not really sure. But I really, really like that. I kind of like the way that shelf actually sits. That's kind of a nice shelf. I like that. Obviously, I love that shelf too. Obviously. But that's a nice shelf too. So you might think that this guy looks absolutely awesome. And honestly, he does not. He was twice the size that he is now. Long story very short, I left him on a heat mat. Um, and I went away for a week and he dried out. So most of his leaves curled over into little tackles and it went brown and just went crispy and nasty. But this right here is my Alocasia Dragon Scale. It's obviously beautiful, it's just really suffered. And I think if I show you at the back there, you will see a leaf at the back there that is still kind of curled almost from the damage and obviously it's gone very dry. Um, generally, it's just taken a huge hit. I don't know if you can see the growth in the background there. It's not done well at all, but it is my fault. I left it on a heat mat. I do not advise that you leave things on heat mats because you will kill them. I may remove this from the house, from the flat. I'm not really sure yet. I haven't really decided if I'm totally honest. So moving down from the allocation dragon scale, honestly, there's nothing exciting down here. I know it might look it, but it's really not. Um, the heat mat I'm using there is off. I do have some Monstera spruciana in there. It's just a tiny leaf, there's nothing to really see. And those are just full of moss, basically. They're pretty empty, so there's nothing to see there, to be quite honest. Now, this part I'm gonna have to turn my aperture right down for. But this here, I hope you can see this, this might be really difficult to see, but this is my very sick looking Monstera deliciosa aurea large form. Now, I know you might not think much of it, but these are super, super, super hard to get. And this one has had spider mites, hence it's looking real, real bad. But there's some variegation on it there. So I'm hoping to grow it out, and I hope it still produces variegation for me. Yeah, it looks terrible. I'm not going to sit and deny that. It really does look terrible, but I hope I can nurse it back. So that's her. She does have a new leaf, so that's really awesome. Down here, there's nothing particularly fun. There is an Aglaonema Pictum tricolor that's looking a bit sad, can't lie. Um, down there, we have a Varicosum cutting that's also a bit sad. 
And then down here we have my, let's see if I can actually pick it up and put it here. We have my philodendron pink congo that is obviously not pink anymore. Um, so those of you that thought I'd thrown it away, I haven't. It's still here. It's still chilling in just the same manner that it has been for the past year. Anybody that doesn't know the tea on this, I've done a full video about it. They revert, basically. It's a fake plant. It's not going to stay pink forever. Um, it will go, well, this color, kind of green, kind of bronzy. So top shelf, not much to tell you. Other than there is a Maranta that does not have an ID. I thought it was a black Maranta, but it turns out it's not. It doesn't actually have any identification. It's a no ID. So it's really nice and really dark, but I can't actually tell you much more about it because I don't know anything more about it. But it's very pretty. It's growing really, really well. Second to that, I just have some normal Maranta cuttings kind of rooting away. No other reason than I just want to test out these Maranta under my lights. That's really the only reason. I want to see what kind of color they go under a more consistent light. So that's why they're there. There's really nothing you know, insanely fascinating there. That's all they are on that shelf. Right, standing back again, this is my Anthurium crystallinum, and it is huge. I don't know if you can tell how big that is, but it is huge. Now, I definitely want to keep this here, even though it's really big. I haven't seen a massive crystallinum before, so I'd like to grow this out and get it as big as I can, but I would like to maybe put it in the living room. So I basically need to find a way of getting a really nice pot for it and letting it grow. Because if I move around to the side, you will see the ridiculousness that is her. That is her right there. Really, really pretty. I don't know if I can get my hand in for scale, but it's, it's literally, it's huge. I love it so much. Really, really beautiful plant there. This is kind of killing me not being able to talk with my hands, by the way, I'm really struggling. <laughs> But this right here, I'll go a little bit closer to it because it's very sad. This is my Philodendron Giganteum Variegata. It's very, very, very sad. At one point it had spider mites and second to that, it's, I think it's got no root because believe it or not, those leaves are super, you know, floppy. They've never really stayed nice since I got it. It's always just been shit. So we'll see what happens with that. I might just take that back to the shop and see if I can rehab it much quicker because it just hates being here. So I may move that. That's very, very sad looking. Down from that, we have another Philodendron Florida Ghost is just chilling on the bottom. Again, the heat mat is not on. And on from that, we have a really sad story about this Philodendron Pink Princess. Now then, I thought all was going well. This thing turned full pink and it literally hates its existence. I thought it was airflow. I thought it was because I named it. I thought it was light. I'm pretty sure it just can't handle being all pink. So what I will probably have to do is chop it down and try again. I'll just chop it all up into cuttings because by this point it looks a bit ugly anyway. I've had a lot of pink leaves at the top continuously drop off. So I'll probably take this out and put it in the shop because I don't actually have any pink princess in the shop um, past some tiny baby ones. So I think I'll probably remove this from here because I don't really want it on the floor anyway, to be honest. Next up, another shameful admission, but this is my Philodendron Vericosum, and it is still not being potted up. It's still in its original pot. This plant was supposed to be potted up absolutely ages ago, and it still hasn't been. So that's really unfortunate. But honestly, apart from that, it's doing really nice. It's a very beautiful plant. It just really needs to be potted up. Um, back from that, you may be able to see, again, can't really stand back. This room gives me no space. But there is my variegated Strelitzia. There's two in the pot, but only one is variegated. This will absolutely be taken to the shop because I can't possibly look after it here. It's just, it's going to be too big for my flat. You know what I mean? I'm not here to look after it. It really needs to go in self-watering. It needs separated, all that good stuff. I just don't have time. I can't be here and look after it. So I'm going to have to do something about that. So that plant is 100% going to be removed from here. I can't really do anything other than that, if I'm totally honest. So you won't see him anymore, maybe in the next tour. I think it'll be gone by then. After that, we have Monstera Eskeleto, formerly known as Monstera Epipremnoides. This did have runners the house. So I took the runners to the shop to hopefully grow those out. And we're left with a really miserable looking Monstera. It started to grow again since I've removed the runners. So that's great. I have loads of little foliage buds developing on the stem there. So I have high hopes that this starts looking much better because it's one of my favorite plants. And it's a real shame to see it looking like that, to be quite honest. 
up from here, don't mind the water bottle, we have a philodendron melanochrysum. And if it looks wonky, I think it's because it is, it's leaning towards the light. But this plant has been through it, guys, let me tell you. For starters, this is the new leaf, which obviously looks beautiful. Notice it's a lot smaller than the other two. But not only that, the damage from spider mites, let me just get past one of these plants. The damage from spider mites on this thing is just beyond a joke. It really is beyond a joke. It got absolutely riddled when I wasn't here for a good week or so. And unfortunately, that is the result of what you're seeing. I managed to save the leaves, but honestly, they're absolutely just done. Like they've stayed permanently really floppy. They're not good. I'm really, really sad that all this has happened while I haven't been here. Because although I feel like a bad plant parent, at the same time, if I'm not here, I'm not here. Do you know what I mean? So it's a shame, but what can you do? And the last plant I have to show you is this little guy. And this guy will not stop growing. Um, he's done brilliantly. This is what is known as Philodendron Dark Bilati or Philodendron Bilati crossed with Atavapoensi. I'm not really sure which one it is. There's a lot of debate on it. But whatever it is, I can tell you it's growing like no tomorrow. Like it doesn't stop. I'm getting a leaf maybe every two weeks quite easily. It's so fast. Now this one almost certainly will go to the shop because although it is growing well here, I just feel like it will grow 10 times better at the shop. So I will probably move this one as well. Possibly, maybe, might do the same thing with the melano. I don't know. I haven't worked it out. So as you can see, a lot of things are probably getting moved from here. If you're wondering what these big black boxes are, by the way, it's just my recording stuff um, that I, I kind of have to store here because I have no space. Some computer stuff, a shit ton of pots, all the non-glamorous stuff that you normally see, that's what that is. So if I move back here, you can see where everything kind of was. This is some of the plants and where they sit. Sorry if it's overexposed again. But that's it, really. That's kind of my tour. I'm going to go back through here because it's overexposed to hell. Okay, I've come back in here because it's just too overexposed otherwise. But that was my houseplant tour, my updated tour. I am very sorry for the quality of this tour. I have tried to film this many different ways, but all of my batteries have decided to go down in one day. I don't know if I mentioned this, but my Spiritus Sancti is not here. It is at the shop. It is perfectly safe, do not worry, but it is at my shop as I nearly killed it from underwatering it because I wasn't here and it nearly dried out. So you only have to tell me once with stuff like that, I brought it to the shop. So it should be better taken care of at the shop. But that essentially is my updated houseplant tour. Now I know that obviously I don't have as many plants as other people, but I have to prioritize the shop in these scenarios. And to be honest, a lot of my personal plants are now in the shop because that's where I'm at most of the time and it, it just makes sense that I look after them there. So I do have more plants than this, they're just not here. Like right now I have a whole bunch of Hoya that I've got in. They're living at the shop, they're not even here because I don't want to risk killing them to be quite honest. Plus I can't hang them here whereas I can at the shop, so. If you like this video, please leave a like down below and if you'd like to see any more of my content, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Links for anything I mentioned are down below in the description and I shall see you all next week. Bye, guys.